For me, it's a different when I'm teaching than when I'm preaching. When I'm teaching, I have notes. I have blank space to fill it up. But when I'm preaching, I'm preaching from my heart. Normally, when I preach in Espanol, I don't have the, the limitation that I have in English. Because when you, preach from, when you preach from your heart, you don't have to send that feeling, that emotion, that idea to your brain. Because it's coming from your heart. So, I've been praying for you guys. <laughs> I'm praying for you that you will be able to understand my broken English. I know that it's not easy for you to understand every single word, but I've been praying that you will, you will understand my heart. Because in, in the heart, we have the same language. We don't have any barrier when we talk from our heart. The enemy is trying to raise up barriers among cultures, among countries, and among language. But when we belong to the Lord, we have one language. One culture. So this week, I've been praying more for you than for me. I, I'm telling you that. I say, Lord, I pray that you will be able to put in my heart what they needed. So every time when I preach, I have to tell you, this is happening in the last years. Because in the last year, uh, I'm asking God, so Lord, what do you have for me? And what do you have for your people? So, when Pastor Eric invited me to preach today, um, I, I was like a Moses. <laughs> no. um, please, look around you. you know, look for other person. Uh, Pastor, please, you pray for one week and we will talk. A week later, how are you, Pastor? You are the one. The Lord told me that you are the one. Now, Pastor, look. Um, um, let's pray one more week. <laughs> and after three or four weeks, I give up. I say, okay, Pastor. I submit to you. I trust you as I trust to the Lord. So this morning, this morning I have a, I have a feeling that not just a feeling, a conviction that for such a time like this, the Lord has put us in coming. Or wherever you live. People are expecting something different from the church. I'm not talking about the building. I'm not talking about the name. I'm not talking about the denominations. I'm talking about the people that belong to the church. We are the church. So I have, I have the conviction that this 2020 was part of the plan. The plan that God has for our life, uh, for our time. Um, I wish I can have a... Um, this two back bureau that you have in your car, and the little one in the middle of the windshield. Because when you are driving, you have to pay attention to this bureau. If you are driving in a highway, especially in, in, in Atlanta, in downtown Atlanta, you have to be aware of every single car around you. Maybe an airplane is going to be on top of your car, because everything is possible in Atlanta. So if you are driving, and if you are a good driver, you have to pay attention to the back. Especially with 18-wheel truck coming 85 miles an hour. But also you have to pay attention to the little mirror that is attached to the windshield. Because you, you want to see what happened really close to your, to your back and your car. But also, there is an, something that they call a spot mirror. That little thing that you attach in this two-size mirror. Because there is like a, like a blind area really close to your car. 
I'm driving a motorcycle. Sometimes you are driving a motorcycle and people cut you because they don't have their little spot mirror. It's so important to have everything that you can have to look back. But if you're driving and just, just looking back, you're going to be in trouble. You have to look back every once in a while, but your main vision has to be in front of you. This 2020, we have to look back. We have to look back. Pastor Eric started ministry in February. He was able to preach one Sunday, I think one or two Sundays, and that's it. COVID-19 give us such a welcome to Pastor Eric in North Lanier Baptist Church. And then for three months up to Mother's Day when we have the celebration, what a sense of freedom we have that day. From that day, we have the opportunity to be together as God people. And let me tell you, because he's not here, you have to know that Pastor Eric when he sees something, when he says something, oh man, he will stand firm. So many times I told him, listen, Pastor, the COVID is increasing. You know, um, we better be careful. Good. Okay, but tell me something. Good. We, we, we're going to trust the Lord. We're going to be trusting God. And let me tell you this. So many churches are dying, are closing doors because the pastor don't have a clear vision what is God able to do with us and through us. And I praise God for Pastor Eric. I told him, do not watch the service. You are on vacation. I hope he's not watching us today. So this morning we are here to declare the hand of God, the Almighty God, through us and with us. Zero funeral, no muertos, no muertos. You know what I mean, no muertos? No one has died, as far as I know, in our congregation. Is that correct? Huh? No by the COVID. So many people pass the Lord present because of other situation. But as, as a church, we don't have any doubt that the Lord has been with us. That amen, I need like 20% more. So we are here to confess our need for God. We are here to look back, but also to be encouraged today and challenged for tomorrow. The 2020 is going to pass. We have three or four more days. But you know what? The situation is going to be present. And we have to trust the Lord for every single day. So the title is a look back, encouragement today, and a challenge for tomorrow. The Bible tells us to look back. You can see when the Bible say the, 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 the God of Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. So the, the, the Bible encouraged us to look back and see what the Lord was able to do in the past. What the Lord was doing last week. But we don't have to just look back or look, I don't know if I'm saying correctly, but look back, you know. If you pass your life talking about what the Lord was able to do through you last year, but forget about last year. Paul say, forget about the last year. We have to pay attention to today and look the front of us with confidence and faith in the Lord. I'm going to read 1 Samuel 7 from verse 2. But before, before we read it, I'm sorry, delete it. Thank you. The situation that we are going to be reading is this. The Philistine, that word is so different than Philisteos. I have to repeat like 20 times per day. Philistine, Philistine, Philistine. So Philistine is the Philisteos. The Philistine 
have returned the ark of God to the people of Israel. They had it. The ark of God represent God himself. The ark of God, it was so holy that if you are not authorized by God to touch it, and you touch it, you will die right there in front of the ark of God. So the Philistine had returned the ark of God to the people of Israel. And 20 years later, they say, hey, what happened to us? Why we return the ark of God to the Israel? Why? We have to go there and we have to capture again because they knew it that the ark of God representing God's presence will be the key, will be the secret. And you know what, guys? We have the ark of God in our heart. The Lord is in our heart. He's the new covenant. Today we are going to be celebrating the, the Lord's Supper. And the Lord told us, I will never drink that, type, that type of wine. I will never eat that bread until I will return. He is present in our life. He is the ark of God in our heart. So the, the, the Philistines say, we are going against the Israelites. Ay, Dios mío. How do you say Israelitas? Israelite. Israelite. The people from Israel. It's easier. <laughs> the people from Israel. Let's read 1 Samuel 7, verse 2. Say that they are remaining. Um, I have to clarify this. I don't have COVID. I'm not. Coughing, I'm crying. So don't worry about that. But at the end, I will put my mask. Where is my mask? Say, so they are remaining in Kiryat Jarin a long time. 20 years and all. That happened when the ark was from the Philistine to Israel. 20 years and all. Then all the people... Oh, Israel, turn them back to the Lord. How important is this? We have to turn him back, but to the Lord. Then the next verse, the same verse says, So Samuel, Samuel, no Samuel, Samuel. <laughs> Samuel and Samuel is the same person, okay? If you hear me say Samuel, you know what I'm talking about. So Samuel say to all the Israelites, if you are returning to the Lord with all your heart, then rid yourself of the foreign God and the asterisk and commit yourself to the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistine. So the Israelite or Israelitas Whenever you say that word, put away their Baal and Nazareth and serve the Lord only. What is serve the Lord only? What implication have that phrase, serve the Lord only? Serve the Lord only is this. A part of him, we are frito, muertos, dead. We don't have any hope a part of the Lord. Serve the Lord only is this. If you know how to sin, sin to the Lord. If you know how to clap your hand, clap your hand to the Lord. If you know how to have passion for the politician, have passion for the Lord. If you think that this present situation is going to be changed because we have a vaccination, let me tell you. Serve the Lord only is this. A part of you, we are dead. Without you, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be possible to do anything in my house, in my job. Serve the Lord only is this. Oh, Lord, please have mercy of me. I need you, Lord. Without you, I'm not going to be making. I'm not, let me tell you, I have cancer three times, 2002, 2005, and 2018. 
non-Hodgkin lymphoma, a stage four. You know why they call it stage four? Because stage five is the cemetery. Three times. The first time I received 96 cycle of chemotherapy, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, every two weeks for nine months. In 2005, I received 25 chemotherapy season. Then in 2018, I received 20. 17 people that received the same treatment in 2002, they're gone. The only one that is running around in my motorcycle and having fun is Lionel. Why? I have one reason. Only one. He wants to be servant only to him. I devote myself to serve the Lord. Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing with that intention. Let me tell you something about Pastor Eric. The first week that he was here, I was in Walmart. I think I shared with you this. I don't know if I share it with you. or Anyway, repeat 10 times and you're going to remember. He was in Walmart. And I was looking for a little ring for a good friend of mine in Venezuela. And he came to me and said, hey, Lionel, how are you? Hey, Pastor Eddie, how are you today? I'm doing good. And then he disappeared. One minute later, the manager of the Walmart right here in Coming, in Marketplace, came to me and she asked me, do you know this guy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I say, yeah, like, oh, my goodness, what happened here? Do he pay the bill? <laughs> say, yeah, I know him. He's the pastor of the church. Let me tell you, he just invited me for the church. He told me, he asked me, do you have a church? I say, no, oh, well, you need to have a church. I invite you for the church that is in front of Troncali. But let me tell you, Troncali, the customer of Troncali, they have to say, we are in front of the church that is up the hill. That pastor go to Panera every morning to drink coffee. And every time when he go to Panera, he established a conversation, intentional conversation with a lady that work in Panera with one goal only, serve the Lord with all your heart. He is preaching the word, not just at the pulpit. We need that kind of pastor. We need that kind of pastor that encourages us to be intentional in every single relationship that we have. Then he go to the gym, and he met uh, Vicky and Omar. And Vicky and Omar are uh, attendings. The Bible study on Wednesday, we are having time with them as a couple. Because Pastor Eric served the Lord only. You don't have to be a pastor to serve the Lord only as a student, as a everything that you are doing. My dear brother, all day, he have a barber shop. He is not cutting hair. He is painting art in the hair of the people. I say to him, can you imagine if I will have that, that opportunity to have a person sitting in a chair with a knife in his throat for 20 minutes, hearing the word of God? <laughs> Are you going to receive the Lord or not? <laughs> Everything that we are doing, we have to do it with that mentality. Serving the Lord only. Okay. Then, the next verse. <laughs> Be patient with me, brothers. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen. He named it this is another word, 
Ebenezer. <laughs> Ebenezer. Ebenezer. <laughs> Ebenezer. Ebenezer saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. In another word, the Lord is been with us up today. And he's with us today. We have the confidence that he's going to be this coming year. I have, I have a um, different factor or different proof that the Lord has been with us in this 2020. I mentioned Pastor Eric. He arrived here and, and at the beginning of the year. And he was able to preach one only sermon. And then COVID-19 was our guest. March, April, up to the second Sunday of May, Mother's Day, as I mentioned already. So many restrictions. Yesterday, uh, I, I was reading the news, and now the news say that the COVID-19 is not in the face of the things. That means you can touch it. Because the only way to have it is through breathing. <laughs> How many bottles of um, hand sanitizer you have bought in, in this year? Because of the COVID-19, we have so many restrictions. I received invitation from the manager of Home Depot to return there as a cashier. Much of you know that I was working as a cashier in Home Depot. And what a tremendous place to be in touch with people. Um, I told her, no, no, listen, um, my doctors say that it's not a good idea for me to be working in, in, in Home Depot. And she told me, Lionel, we need you. I said, well, I'm sorry, but <laughs> look for another person. Like I'd say to Pastor Eric, <laughs> no, it's not me. You have, you have the wrong person. Lionel, we need you. Then I visited her. I said, what happened? She told me, so many people are afraid of the COVID. And I know that you are not afraid of the COVID. Los Rios, what a good place to eat. I received 10% of every person that say that you are there because Lionel say that Los Rios is a good place to be. Please mention my name, Lionel Portillo. People entered there with the mask. But you know what made the difference? The plate, <laughs> the food. <laughs> what I'm telling you is this. As a Christian, it's true that we need the face mask. I, I have it right here. But as a Christian, we have to trust the Lord with all our heart, all our mind, and all our strength. We almost lost the Russells. I remember the parade. We made the parade in front of their house. Where are the Russells? Are here? Hey, I'm sorry, but you are with us. You, you're going to be with us for a long time. We need you. And I remember that day at the parade. I think I was the second car, and I, I opened the door, and I was walking through their place. And then my dear brother said, no, 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 no. Stay there. Stay there. But look, we have the Russell here. Praise the Lord. You know why? Because you are an excellent servant of God. You are ready to serve the Lord. You are ready to serve the Lord only. In the heaven, in heaven, they don't need electricians. We need it here. So the attendance of the church have a challenge. Come to church. I mean, every Sunday, come to church is an act of faith. Especially if the preacher cry, you don't worry about it. When I finish, I will go to my office so you can go home. 
Don't worry about it. But who is our Philistine? Who is the one that is trying to capture you and grab your back and pull you back so you will not follow the Lord with all your heart? But we are growing. Praise the Lord. The church is growing in the middle of the 2020. We have new family. We have new people. Even this panic congregation is growing. Even with me as a pastor, they are growing. We have new elders. We have new deacons. Finally, we pay the debt to the bank. <coughs> the brick house, you know, five years ago, five years ago, when I moved from Miami to come in, um, I'm not, I'm not moving, I mean, I not moved from Miami to come in. I moved from Miami to United States. <laughs> and that time, I talked to Ronnie Taylor. I said, Ronnie, uh, I prefer to be by myself. I, I don't want to be in a house. You know, I'm an exchange, exchanger. Um, my English is, if I talk English like this, you can imagine what happened to me five years ago. And I, I told him, may I use the brick house as my house? And he told me, no, 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 no. It's not ready. Five years now is ready. Finally, finally the brick house is ready. Young people, finally you have a place to cry, to, to yell, to jump, to do whatever you want. Say amen. We have to encourage them. The leadership of Pastor Eric is being manifested in our church. You, you know... He's the type of pastor that pay more attention to you as a person than to you as a number. That he pay more attention how you are doing. He don't pay too much attention what you are doing. He pay attention how you are doing. Has your family? This morning, he texts me. He's in vacation. I told him, please turn off your telephone. If we have a dead people, I will put salt. So the body will be in good condition. <laughs> I told him, <laughs> please, this morning, Pastor Lionel, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that the Lord will bring his word to his people. When in June, no, let me see, in July 2015, when we moved here, I took a chair and I put it right there where the sign of the church is. And I count how many cars passing, not in the rush hour. I think it was from 10 to 11. In one hour, just in one direction, 324 cars in one hour. The influence of this building, I'm talking about the building now. I'm not talking about the people. Just the building. What a great location we have as a building. How many churches want, they, they want a building and this, the, the main road them coming. So, Troncali received the benefit from us, but let me tell you, it's going to be the time when Troncali will say we are in front of the lighthouse calling. By the way, we, we have a community of people praying to the Lord to see if the Lord wants to, to give us a new name, but not just a name. 
a new expression, a new direction. God is going to do something new and coming with us, through us, and in us. The influence of the church is growing. We, you know, as a pastor, um, as a pastor, I feel so proud to be part of this local church. I'm telling you the truth. I will pay money to be part of this local church. We are like a lighthouse indicating the way to the Lord. You can imagine if we have that name, Lighthouse. Ay, ay, ay. Until today, the Lord has helped us. And he keep helping us. You know, when I have note, I'm in trouble. Forget about the note. Pastor Marshall, he came to our church as an interim pastor. He has such a personality, you know, so different than Pastor Eric. <laughs> you put Pastor Marshall and you put Pastor Eric and you see what's going on here. But the Lord used Pastor Marshall such a splendid way. You know, he did something. When he gets sick, we were praying for Pastor Marshall. Now he's serving as an interim pastor in another church. You know what? Because we trust the Lord. Listen, guys, we have an almighty power God. He's able to rescue. He's able to heal. He's able to answer our prayers. He's able to do it through us and with us. So my heart for you guys is this. 2020 has been hard. I was trapped in Venezuela for one month. I was there. At the beginning, February 9 to April 9, one month. I mean, March, March 9 to April 9. But 2020 is going to be a dark year in our memories. But the 2021 is going to be different. Even with the COVID-19 the COVID-19 is not our enemy. Our enemy is using the COVID-19 to try to put fear in our heart, to stop the growing of the church. But let me tell you, I can see that the church, North Lanier Baptist Church, and North Lanier Espanol, and North Lanier Vietnamese, Italian, we have, we have such a good location for have different expression of God people in these facilities. May the Lord help us in the 2021 to accomplish his will that is my prayer that is my prayer and finally say amen, amen. ah now you say amen huh? <laughs> finally we're going to read Isaiah 43 14 to 19 please you can put it there Isaiah 43 14 to 19. We start with the 14. We start with, this is what the Lord say. Oh no, I have it here. I'm sorry, I have it here. This is what the Lord say. You Redeemer, the only one of Israel. I am the Lord. You only one. Israel creator. Your kin. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariot and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to raise again, extinguish. I have a word here, a snuff it. Huh? It's enough. Thank you, brother. I take you to Los Rios this week. 
snuff out like a week. 18. Forget the former thing. Do not dwell on the past. What? No, wait, wait, wait. Not so fast. I know you, have, you are hungry, but wait. What is forget the former things? If we are not able to change, the new wine needs new wine skin. And God have new wine for us as a church. New way to express our freedom. New way to say, praise the Lord. New, new way to say, arrive time by the Lord is been with us. Don't be afraid to raise up your hand. This brother right here, every time when I ask, how are you? <laughs> how are you, bro? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My dear brother, we need that spirit every single day. No limitation from God. Forget the former thing is this. Be able to have a new name. Be able to have a new personality. Be able to feel the Lord present in a new way. See this, see, I'm doing, next, hey, yeah, see this, I'm doing a new thing. Now, it spring up. Do you not perceive it? The question is, are you able to see that the Lord is being manifested in our church? Say, I'm making a way in the wilderness and a stream in the wasteland. 